In this video, I'm going to show you the top 10 Divi 3 features that made me change to Divi as my go-to theme. Now these features are great for what I've been doing, they might be great for what you need or what you're doing. So check out this video, we're getting started right now. Hey what's up guys, welcome back to another video, it's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, and you like WordPress tutorials and tips and tricks, click the subscribe button, then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And with that out of the way, if you like deals, check out the half off hosting deal I negotiated for you with Inmotion Hosting. Nearly every plan is half off, some are less, but every plan has a discount that you could use for yourself or for your clients or whatever. Feel free to go check that out in the link down below or the card that popped up. And with that out of the way, let's head to this tutorial. So the first awesome feature about Divi is the import export of pages and layouts function. You can design an awesome page, export it, and import it to a different site. So if you have a design agency or you're, you're building one or you have design clients or whatever, you can have a, a Divi site where you just have like this master templates of all the designs you've made. You can export them from there and import them to a website you're building and create sites just so much faster that way. And an easy way to do this if you, ha if you don't have a set of templates is go over to the Divi blog or the Elegant Themes blog and search in here 100 days. When Divi 3 was launched, Elegant Themes had a 100 days of Divi promotion. And if you search 100 days, it pulls up a lot of the posts for the 100 days, not in order. See here's day 99, here's day 31. But if you scroll through these, you will see layouts that you can get for free. For example, Here's free coming soon page layouts, even free child themes. Go to page two, free small business layout pack. Let's open this one. Scroll on the page, but there's gonna be some images and the ability to download this layout pack. Elegant Themes has detected I'm a subscriber, so they don't make me opt in here, but you may have to enter your email address to download this pack. Once you have, this button will appear, click on it to download it, unzip the zip file that comes on your computer, and we now have this set of pages. There's an about page, a contact page, a home page, and a services page. Now to import these to Divi is super simple. Go to the Divi menu, go to the Divi library, click on import and export, click on the import tab, click on choose file, Pick the file you want to import. I'm going to choose home from that template pack and then click on import. It usually takes about a minute, sometimes longer depending on how big the page is, but most pages aren't that big. It goes pretty quick. Now we have our layout imported and the page is going to refresh and we'll see the new layout in our Divi library list. This is the first entry in this site's list, but you may have a lot or a few. You'll start somewhere. So now we have this layout. We're gonna add this layout to a page. We're gonna go over to pages, add new. I'm gonna call this 10 awesome features of Divi. Gonna save draft. Gonna click on the use the Divi builder button to open the Divi builder. Then click on load from library. It's gonna be a list of predefined layouts that come with the theme that you can easily load to the page. I'm gonna click on add from library because this is where our own library is. In this case, I'm loading a full page. This is a full homepage template, so I have this box checked. It's checked by default, actually. Replace the existing content with loaded layout. If all you're doing here is importing one module, you probably don't want to have this checked because you're probably importing that module into an existing page and it would overwrite everything if you had this checked. So make sure you consider whether this should be checked or not before you load it in. I'm gonna click on load, and now we have our content. All these rows are collapsed. That's why it looks like there's nothing there. Click on the down arrow, they pop up. And by default, when you're building a page, all these will be open. And if you have a lot of these, pages can get really long. And if you, for example, if you have this section completely done and you don't wanna see it anymore, it's awesome to be able to collapse it, which I haven't seen in a lot of builders. You can right click on the blue vertical band here. We have a special Divi menu that appears. And you just choose collapse. And then you can right click on the section here and then choose rename and call this, give this a better name. Maybe this is the, the bio section. So as you scroll down your big page, you can just read the section titles and know what's in there and whether that's the spot you have to go to. 
So using that collapse feature and being able to rename is the second awesome feature I love about Divi. The third one is undo and redo and history. So up here, there's an undo button. If we right click on things, there's an undo button. So if we click on undo, guess what it does? It undoes what you did. So right now it's not undoing anything. There, it not undid the section name. And I haven't done anything besides that, but if I delete this, oops, gone, because there's no warning when you delete things. See how there's, I just go X, gone. And that little X, that could be hours of work inside that module, just gone without even asking me if I'm sure if I want to delete it. Luckily, I can click on undo and undo again, and they come back. If you undid something you didn't want to undo, you can click on redo, and it re-deletes it in this case, or deletes it again. And then there's also the history button, which shows a list of all the things that have happened. This is kind of like revisions in a regular WordPress site. If you click on any of these, it will go to that part, and as you can see, they're being removed as I click on these. So the undo, redo, and history are my third favorite feature of Divi. The fourth one is being able to set padding and margins for different devices inside every single element. So if I go to any one of these and I click on the hamburger icon to edit it, if we go to the advanced design settings and scroll down till we get to the padding and margin, we see we have a custom margin here and a custom padding. If we enter a value, this, this one already has values, so we have this little phone icon over here. The custom margin does not have the phone icon because there are no values. So if let's set the right to 10 pixels, tab out of there, now I have the phone icon up here. Click on the little phone icon, now we have tabs. So we can set different margins for different devices. So maybe on the tablet we want to have 15 pixels on top as well. Smartphone we want to have none of these and just 20 pixels on the right. And this can be either left blank or with zero, it's, it's the same thing. Then if you click through these tabs, we see 10 pixels on the right for the desktop, 15 on top, 10 on the right for tablet, 20 on the bottom for a smartphone. And we're able to define specifically for responsiveness how we want elements to appear, which is awesome. And a lot of the features inside the Divi editor here do that. Body line height, Smartphone tab, set for different devices. We don't have a letter spacing set, let's set one. Now the smartphone appears, set it for different devices. You get the idea. Making pages that work well on different devices is super simple inside of Divi. And Divi takes us even one step further for my fifth favorite feature, but we have to go to the front end editor to see how that works. So if I scroll to the very top, I'm gonna click on use visual builder, and that's gonna open the page as a visual builder, which I find a lot more fun to work with. So the way we set the padding and margin for phones and tablets and desktop just a moment ago, we have to make the changes, save it, test it, see how it looks. On the front end editor, when we hover over elements, we can see spacing appear there, that, that blue shading down there, that is margin. Now we have the, the two-sided arrow that appears. Hang on, there it is. Now if I click and hold, I can drag and drop to increase that margin however I want to. I don't need to do any trial and error for how much margin and padding to add. I can just drag and drop this stuff. There's none at the top, oh there's one at the top. Click and drag. Let's make it that big, that looks beautiful. Scroll down. If we want, uh, I want some more space. It's hard to find them sometimes, but it's that shaded area that appears. And you click and drag, and you adjust how much spacing you want above and below and between things, and then that sets it automatically in the code, and you save it by clicking on these three buttons. You have menus that appear, save draft or publish on the right, and then those changes you made are saved. There's no trial and error. It's just dragging and dropping to how you want it to appear. My seventh, no, number six, my sixth favorite feature of the Divi theme are these views on the left-hand side. We're in desktop view. We click on the tablet, now we're in tablet view. And guess what? We can change the margins like we did before, and this applies just to the tablet view. Then we save it when we're happy. Phone view, guess what? Again, we can change the margins to be just for the phone view. 
and that's awesome. It, it makes life so much easier. If we go in to edit any one of these, hover over and click on the wrench, or sorry, the gear. The gear opens the editing box, and then we have all the same options for editing as we do in the back end, just inside this little box. If we go to the design, then we also have the same tabs as before, and you can add stuff on the front end through this little box here. When you're happy with your changes, click on save draft or publish to update the page. As you can see, I didn't actually save those margins that I changed, so they reverted back. So I'm just gonna put those back, save draft, make sure they're saved. My seventh favorite feature of the Divi theme. Let's head back into the backend editor. If we're trying to make things mobile, and for whatever reason, your module or the row, the entire row just doesn't work on a mobile device or it doesn't work on a desktop device and you have to recreate it, which happens sometimes, you can very, very easily make them appear on one device and not the other. So let's do this entire row. I'm gonna copy this row, duplicate the row. I'm gonna click on the hamburger icon for the first row. If we scroll down, we have disable on in the general settings. We can choose which devices this should appear for. So if we choose phone and tablet, this will only appear on the desktop. So I'm gonna kind of call this section for desktop. And then I'm gonna click on the hamburger icon for the second one, scroll down and call this section for mobile. Now we can't actually see those section names until we collapse them, which is one drawback of Divi, actually. I like to see section names without collapsing. But anyway, here we have a section for desktop, section for mobile. These will never appear on the same device. You can spoof devices using your computer or your phone, so it makes it look like they're a different device, but you can't have a device be two things at once. So either it's mobile or it's desktop. It can't be both at the same time. So these sections will appear on one and never the other. So that's a great way to make sure that your sites and your elements are very, very specifically designed for each device if you want to do that. Another awesome feature. I'm going to add a module right here. I'm going to add the code module. This is awesome because you can add pretty much anything into here that is code. You can add raw HTML. You can import CSS files. You can import JavaScript. You can just put JavaScript directly in there, or you can import the JavaScript file. What you can't do is PHP in here, but you can do all the front end stuff, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript right in the code. And that was my eighth favorite feature of Divi. Number nine is being able to save things to the library. Let's say we make an awesome piece of code here. Let's call this special social sharing. So you create some code here that is super custom and super awesome social sharing functionality, and you want to save it. Maybe use it on other pages, other sites, whatever. Click on save and add to library. Give it a name. I'm going to call this special social sharing. I'm going to selectively sync all of these. I'm not going to make this global. You can add a category if you like, which is important if you have a lot of stuff in your library. I'm not going to add one in this case. I'm going to click on save and add to library. And now we have the ability to go to any other page or just right here, click on insert module again, click on add from library. And now we have our special social sharing right here. Click on that and boom, it's in the page. It's in this page again. Like I said, you can add to other pages. Taking that one step further, let's save this testimonial, for example. Looks like a good one. I'm gonna save it, add to the library. Testimonial. This time I'm gonna make it global, which is one of the number one reasons that I switched to Divi. This one checkbox right here. Click on save and add to the library. Now it's gonna show up as green, notifying you that this is a global element. And what this means is you can insert this just like I did just a second ago with the special social sharing. You can insert this to any number of pages you want. The difference is with the social sharing one, the way we saved it, it's imported, then you can change it for that specific page. The testimonial being global, you add it to all those pages, but if you change it in any one of those instances, it's changed in all of them at the same time. So this element is, is syncing to every other instance of that same element on your site. And there's a lot of ways you can use this. I'm sure you thought of some just now and I told you how it worked. That is the number one reason that I switched to Divi. Feature number 10 that I like a lot. Right click on any element, click on lock. 
it's gonna turn red. And this means that only admins can edit this. So if you have other people in your site who are making changes or adding content or doing something, you can make sure they don't change things by mistake, which happens. I mean, we're, we're all human, stuff happens. So you can lock rows, you can lock elements, you can lock um, individual modules to make sure that nothing's changed by accident. And then only admins are able to come in, right click, unlock, and then start editing it again. And that was my 10th favorite feature in Divi, but I have two more bonus ones for you because you stuck around. One of them I have to show you in the visual builder because it's more fun to see it out there. So I'm gonna go to the visual builder and this is copying pasting elements. You can easily duplicate an element. That's, that's fine, that, that's pretty much every builder can do that, but you're saving clicks by being able to copy and paste. So if I wanna copy or duplicate, for example, just duplicate that and then we can move it around and we can edit it and that, that's all great. But we can also right click on it, choose copy module, and then we can go over here and hang on, I've got to right click on the actual gray menu there. Then we can paste the module. And we can go down here. We can paste it down here. Then we can go over here and paste it here. And that just reduces some clicks. And if you design a lot and you do it every day, every little trick you can use to save the number of times you click saves you time, saves you headache, saves you burning out that day or burning out long term. So that's favorite feature number 11. Favorite feature number 12 is split testing. I'm going to head back into the back end editor and I'm going to show you what the split testing is and basically how you set it up. But really quickly, it's a whole tutorial on its own to do it properly. So we have the headline here, need help with that. The headline is often an element you want to split test. So if we right click on the element, we can choose split test. So now we set that up as a split test. Now we have to choose our goal element, which is often a call to action or an opt-in or something. So it can track how successful our split testing is. So if we choose a call to action, maybe uh, follow, follow on social media. That's our goal. So now we chose that as our goal and our split test is ready to go. Click on okay. So the first button says need help. The second button says get help now. And then we're able to split test which one converts better right inside the theme. You don't need an extra third party software to do that, although they have a lot more features, but you can do simple basic split tests right in the Divi theme. And that's bonus number two, my favorite feature number 12. That's the end of the video. So that's how easy it is. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the half off for hosting deal in the description down below and possibly in the card that popped up if I had any remaining cards. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.